Welcome back to Kinetics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. We're going to be looking at branched reaction sequences in this video and how to derive a rate law for this using steady state approximation kinetics. All right, so here's our setup. We've got two substrates or reactants, A and B, are in equilibrium with some molecule C. It's an intermediate. Uh, the equilibrium is described by K1, the forward reaction, and K-1, the reverse reaction. And then C can actually branch off in one of two directions. If it branches towards D, <coughs> excuse me, it's described by the rate constant K2. If it branches to E, it's described by the rate constant K3. And so what we want to do is derive the rate of formation of D, and then also separately the rate of formation of E. But like any steady state approximation problem, we need to develop the rate law for the intermediate, which in this case is obviously C. So what we do is we define the rate of change of the concentration of C with respect to time, dc dt. And what is that equal to? Well, well, let's look at what produces C. K1, so K1 is positive, and the reactants with respect to K1 are A and B, okay? We also see C is eliminated by K minus one, so that's negative, minus K minus one times C, because C is the reactant with respect to K minus one. We have two other reactants that are getting rid of, of C, that's K2 and K3, so those are both gonna be negative, so we should have minus K2 times C and minus K3 times C, because C is the reactant with respect to both of those rate constants. And, when, because we're using steady state approximation, our assumption is that the rate of change of this intermediate with respect to time is zero, so this entire expression is set equal to zero. Now, what I want to do is I want to get all the c's on one side. And the reason I know to get the c's on one side is because c is my intermediate. I'm both, sol I'm both finding the expression for its rate of change with respect to time, and I'm finding the expression for its concentration, okay? So, I get all the C's on one side, so all these negative terms I'm just gonna add over to the other side. And what I'm left with is, over on the left side, K1 times A times B is equal to, and then all of these, because they're added over to the other side, become positive. K minus one C plus K2 C plus K3 C, all right? Now, I have a C in each of these terms, I'm just gonna factor out the C on the right side. So I have K1 times A times B equals, I've pulled the concentration of C out right here, and then I have a, this term here, which is the sum of all of these rate constants now. K minus one plus K2 plus K3. Now I'm very close. I can now find the expression for the concentration of C. I'm gonna divide through by the sum of these three rate constants. So my concentration of C is equal to K1 times A times B divided by this sum, K minus one plus K2 plus K3. All right, so I figured out this now. Now I need to find the rate of formation of D and then the rate of formation of E. So the rate of formation of D is the change in the concentration of D with respect to time, which is K2 times the concentration of C. And then the rate of formation of E with respect to time is equal to K3 times the concentration of C. Well, I just found the concentration of C, it's this whole expression. So all I'm gonna to do to find these two rates, the rate of formation of D and the rate of formation of E, I'm gonna plug this expression in for both Cs. So the rate of formation of D is equal to K2, which is from here, times this whole expression, K1 times A times B, divided by the sum of these three rate constants. And then for the rate of formation of E, I'm gonna have a very similar expression. It's gonna be K3 from here, times this whole thing, K1 times A times B, divided by the sum of these three rate constants. And so what you can see in this particular setup, the only difference between these two rates is the rate constant that's out in front of this whole term right here. In the case of D, it's K2. In the case of E, it's K3. All right, so this is how you deal with the kinetics of branched reaction sequences using steady state approximation kinetics. All right, hopefully you learned something from this video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.